Just in time for Valentine's. Tonight's movie is... It's a throwback to last year. Because it's the same movie I did last year. Only last year I wasn't making videos. I was doing the written reviews. And so this year I thought... How about if we did a little throwback to the written review. And we just read a, re a written review. And we film it. And throw in some pictures and stuff. Because there was a big part of me, and a bigger part of me now is kicking myself because I thought that that would be easier. I thought, I was like, I'm going to be lazy and kind of take the week off. I didn't realize it was going to be way more work. It's like, it's not even done. That, that, that part's not even done yet. It's taking so long. <laughs> I don't know when it's going to be done. It'll be done soon, but I don't know exactly like in terms of scheduling it's definitely not quicker i hope nobody likes it because i kind of don't want to do it again i kind of do want to do it again but i don't want to do it again i want to do it like a, as a special thing like finding something where it's like i like this old review i'm just gonna put it out i'm not gonna be like you know sunday decide hey this wednesday i'm gonna put this out because it, it took a, way more time it's not hard, but it takes a lot of time, and time can be hard to come by. So, it's it's on its way. It's a uh, it's supposed to be on time. It's supposed to be a little Valentine's Day pre-funk, because I think, I hope everybody has better things to do on the actual Valentine's Day than to watch one of my videos, because the rest of the year, people seem to have more time or better things to do than watch my videos. So I wanted to get it out on at a decent time and I was planning to do more than one, but now I'm like, yeah, I'm gonna be lucky to do one because life's hard. So without further ado, uh, I'm gonna put it on, uh, enjoy. I'm sure a lot of you guys have been wanting this for a long time. You, this is a, huge opportunity you get to listen to me read some of you who have been facebook fans for a while have heard me read before but now now the rest of you are in on the treat i'll catch you at the end my bloody valentine 1981 directed by george mahalka the film opens with two miners getting it on in a mine until the male kills the female which really has nothing to do with the rest of the film. If anything, it's ahead of its time, because this is how all the early 2000 remakes and sequels began. An opening scene to remind us of what a badass the killer is. Thursday, February 12th, a mining town. As a bunch of young miners get off work, these boys know how to have fun. Nothing like talking about sex while showering with all your buddies. The hillbilly music kicks in. The boys all get in their cars, and suddenly it's light outside. Did they just stay up all night? They go to the clubhouse where the Valentine's dance is going to take place. This must be filmed in Canada because they're all drinking Moosehead. Chief Newbie enters holding an unlit tobacco pipe. What a douche. Newbie then gives Mayor Hanniger, who just receives a Valentine, a ride. The Valentine has a note attached. It's a warning. He opens the heart-shaped box and instead of chocolate, there's a human heart inside. This, this can't be happening again. He dramatically repeats over and over. This must have happened before. The miners are now hanging out at the local bar. Have they really not slept yet? Happy, the barkeep, is the harbinger of death. He tells the story of the Valentine's Dance of 1960. There was an explosion inside the mine, and they only found one survivor, Harry Warden. Harry spent some time in a psych ward, and the following Valentine's Day, he came back. He killed the mining supervisors and cut out their hearts. He seems to have a serious issue with Valentine's Day dances, as if Valentine's Day had anything to do with the explosion in the mine. Happy says he comes back every year. It's a small town. How are they not prepared for this? That's worse than the Pacific Northwest and snow. How have these kids never heard this story before? Mayor Hanniger's son, TJ, left for a while, and now he's back. His girlfriend, well, ex-girlfriend, Sarah, has moved on, and his dad put him to work in the mine. Isn't that the opposite of the stereotype? If you're a mayor and you don't want your kid doing blue-collar work, you want him going to school and following in your footsteps. 
Maybe Hanniger is just really insecure and doesn't want his son to outdo him. But TJ is angry, and I feel a red herring set up. The killer woke before dawn. He put his boots on, then he walked over to the laundromat to drop off a valentine. A woman walks in, reads the attached note, then gets panicked, or gets attacked. A pickaxe death. Elsewhere, at the junkyard, I assume these three friends are high, because it's after dark and they are heating up food on the radiator of a car. TJ and Axel are not too far away getting drunk while Axel plays a harmonica. The killer is watching. Now that TJ is back, Sarah's with Axel, and everybody is giving him shit for leaving. Are they still trying to set up the red herring? Even though we just saw everybody from the killer's POV? The next day, Mayor Hanniger and Chief Newby are on the case while Sarah is trying to decide between Axel and TJ. Newby discovers Mabel's body at the laundromat. She, she's fried in the dryer. That's one serious dryer. Hanniger is obsessed with Harry Warden and it's happening all over again while Newby wants to keep it on the DL. Hanniger cancels the dance thinking that will solve everything. TJ takes Sarah to the river or lake, some body of water. Nobody knows where TJ went when, they, when he disappeared or why. Now he's trying to win her back. With the dance canceled, everybody hangs out at the bar and decides to have their own little party. But where? Why don't they just hang out at the bar for Valentine's Day? It's the same thing. Parties are for people who aren't old enough to get into a bar, and the bar cleans up your mess. They decide to have the party at the clubhouse by the mine. Happy is pissed and decides to take matters into his own hands. But while preparing a scare, he becomes the next victim. The following evening, as the festivities are beginning, Newbie gets a present. A heart-shaped box. There's no human heart inside. However, it is from Mabel. You know, the woman who died a few days ago. Newbie walks around smoking his unlit pipe like he thinks he's Sherlock Holmes and he discovers another heart-shaped box. This time it's bloody and there's a note attached letting him in on the party. At the party, TJ and Axel get into a fight over Sarah until Lucas breaks it up. Axel goes outside alone with his beer. Killer filler. Some girl waiting for some guy to return with a beer. John and Sylvia. He returns and finds her corpse hanging in the shower and guess who's not getting laid tonight? It's that point at the party where it's time to take a ride through the mine. Which piss, pisses TJ off because there's a rule against women going inside the mine. But there's not a rule against partying in there. Apparently. They all go anyway. But TJ stays behind because he might be the killer. Dun, dun, dun. He's definitely not the killer. But nice try, movie. Back at the clubhouse, a blonde finds a human head in the fridge. Just as John comes back. Then Alex. Or then Axel. <laughs> They know what's going on, but Sarah and the others are already in the mine. TJ and Axel must suck it up and join forces. They evacuate the clubhouse and go after the others. Conveniently, TJ volunteers to check out the abandoned section of the mine. You know, because he's not the killer. More killer filler. Killer filler is where they kill people that have no purpose in the movie. Just to show that the killer is a killer. A random couple making out. Oh, wait. It's Mike and Harriet, part of the group that came into the mine. After they meet their demise, the others hear a noise. It's the killer smashing lights with his pickaxe. Chief Newby runs into a few people that left the clubhouse. He finds out about the current killings and the mine. He calls every unit and makes his way. TJ finds the others and warns them that they need to leave. For some reason, he's wearing a little red... <laughs> a little scarf tied around his neck. It's not red. Like Fred from Scooby-Doo. What? Was that... <laughs> Was that really a thing back then? He's also revealing a lot of chest hair. Lucas finds Harriet and Mike's corpses. Then he finds the killer. Then death finds him. Sarah, Patty, and Howard, I'm throwing these names out as I learned them, stumble across or upon Lucas's corpse. The killer is approaching, but the girls can't get their shit together, so Howard just bails on them. Sarah slaps the shit out of Patty, Patty and Axel finds them. We've still yet to see TJ and the killer in the same scene. Dun, dun, dun. I'm kidding. He's definitely not the killer. They find TJ just as the newbie approaches the scene. They try to get out as he tries to get in. We're down to TJ, Axel, Patty, and Sarah. TJ and Axel are both wearing mining suits, just like the killer. Axel find, falls into the water, and then there were three. TJ disappears, and then there were two. Two girls who weren't even supposed to be in the mine to begin with. Make that one girl as Patty gets killed, while TJ is MIA, and coincidentally, Sarah is the last one standing. But now, TJ is back. As he rescues her, the killer shows up, finally placing him and TJ in the same scene, and it's time for a little railway standoff. The police arrive. 
The killer is about to kill TJ until Sarah intervenes with a large rock, which leads to the big weird reveal. The pull an ending out of your ass scene. Axel has a flashback of Harry Warden killing his father while he hid under the bed. They kill him, but once the cops arrive, we find he is still very much alive, setting up the sequel that never was. As he disappears, he's singing and laughing, like the Skittles rabbit. The end. If you did enjoy that review, there are... I did reviews for a few years before I started doing videos, and there's a good at least 150 to 200. There's probably... might be closer to 250. I have no idea. It might be it might be 175. I don't know. But if you go on the website, you can click on the link in the you know below in the comment section. And you can look up uh there is a search option. I think it's actually kind of hard to find on the page though. But if you if you like scroll up, there's a search, you know, the microscope. And you can type in type in a movie, type in a keyword. Um if it's if it's if I've done something on it, it's there. It'll come up. Because I was pretty good about tagging. Then I found out I didn't have to tag that well. Because it's like you can just you just type in the. And it'll pull up everything I've ever written that has the word the in it. But other than that, have a happy Valentine's Day. I will talk to you soon with a new original. It's kind of a quasi busy month. Because it's, uh, it's February. We got Valentine's Day. We got women in horror. And we got Black History Month, and we got, I got two weeks left to cover it, so stay tuned. The Badass Award goes to Sarah, even though all she did was hit the killer with a rock. But she also put up with a lot of emotional bullshit in the meantime. What did we learn? Survival tips! Don't get it on in a mine. Don't leave a party alone. Don't separate in a mind.